Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the podcast The Endurance of Labor Laws. I am your lovely host Leslie Sullivan, and today is episode 99 and we are going to take a look at the super fun sites located in the state of Maine. But first of all, let me give a big shout out to my listeners. So a big shout out to Indiana, Illinois, Massachusetts, British Columbia, Texas, New York, Oklahoma, and Virginia. In terms of countries, the United States, Canada, and the Russian Federation. Okay, so let's go ahead and start on this one. This is very interesting. Maine is a very beautiful, uh, I was going to say country, but state. Getting my words mixed up. Maine has done a really good job of not having too many super fun sites, and from what I can tell, they don't have any that are going to be added. So I don't see any that are being proposed. I do see that they have already cleaned some up. So let's go ahead and start on this one here. So first, I'm going to go over the ones that are currently active in the state of Maine, and then we will finish this podcast with the ones that are deleted and good to go and cleaned up. So these are the ones that are currently active. The first one is Loring Air Force Base. It is located in the county of I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but Aroostook, A R. O O S T O O K and let's see how many people live in that county. Let's see, there's 67,105 people living in that county. The issue with this super fun site is groundwater is contaminated with volatile organic compounds also known as VOCs such as trichloroethylene TCE and fuel related compounds including benzene to eulene. Soil contains significant amounts of fuel, oil, polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons also known as PAHs, PCBs and various VOCs, surface water and sediment contaminated with VOCs, PCBs, PAHs and heavy metals. This one was added to the list February 21st, 1990. The next one that is current and active in Maine is Brunswick Naval Air Force, or sorry, Brunswick Naval Air Station, excuse me. It is located in the county of Cumberland. and their population is 303,069 people live in that area. The issue with this one is waste and chemicals from pesticides, ordnance, firefighting foam, and uncapped landfill. I don't know what an uncapped landfill means, but if it's a landfill, that's not a good thing. It was added to the list July 22nd, 1987. The next one is McKinn Company. It is also located in the county of Cumberland. It was added to the list September 8th, September 8th, 1983. The next one is Callahan Mine. It is located in the county of Hancock. Hancock County has uh, or sorry, Hancock County has 55,478 people living there. And the issue with this one it just says mining tailings. I'm not exactly sure what all that means, but it's bad enough that it's considered a super fun site in the United States. This one was added to the list September 5th, 2002. The next one is Winthrop Landfill. As we've seen in the past, landfills and anything that is municipal tends to be pretty bad in terms of this, in terms of dumping site and waste sites. This one is located in the county of Kennebec. Kennebec County has 123,642 people living in that area. It doesn't tell me what the issue is, but it was added to the list September 8th, 1983. The next one is Union Chemical Company Inc. It is located in the county of Knox. Knox County has 40,607 people living there. It doesn't tell me what the issue is, but it was added to the national priorities list on October 4th, 1989. The next one is Eastland Woolen Mill. It is located in the county of I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but I think it's Penobscot and it's P E N O P S COT and that county has 152,199 people living there. It doesn't tell me what the issue is with this one, but I do know that it was added to the national priorities list July 22nd, 1999. The next one is West Site House Corners. It is also located in that county that we just mentioned. It doesn't tell me what the issue is. But I do know that it was added to the list September 29th, 1995. The next one is Eastern Surplus. It is located in the county of Washington. Washington County as of 2010, which that's a little outdated, but as of 2010 has 31,095 people living there. 
It doesn't tell me what the issue is with this Superfund site, but I do know that it was added to the list June 17th, 1996. The next one is Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. It is located in the county of York. Let's see, it doesn't give me a population for York County, but I do know that this one was added to the list May 31st, 1994. The next one is Saco or Saco S A C O Municipal Landfill. Again, when it's a landfill, it tends to be pretty bad. This one is also located in the county of York. It doesn't tell me what exactly is wrong with this site, but I do know that it was added to the list February 21st, 1990. That is it for the active sites in the state of Maine. So short and sweet with that. So let's go ahead and go over the ones that have been deleted. So again, we're looking at the national priorities list and when it says they have been deleted, that means that that they have been cleaned up and they're good to go. Whatever happened there has been resolved and the environment has been basically cleaned up and it's more in its natural state than what it was before when it had a super fun site located there. So the first one is Panet Salvage Yard. It was located in the county of Aroostook. However you pronounce that, A R O O S T O O K. And that one was cleaned up and good to go as of September 30th, 2002. The next one is O'Connor Company. It was located in the county of Kennebec, and it tells me that this one was cleaned up and good to go as of July 22nd. Uh, that's going to be 2014. The next and last one is Saco Tannery Waste Pits. It was located in the county of York, and it says that this one was cleaned up and good to go as of September 29th, 1999. So that is it for the lovely state of Maine in terms of super fun sites. So the state of Maine has done a really good job on that. I did want to do a little bit of housekeeping on something. So the other day, um I talked about the EPA and that they had passed a new rule law or regulation regarding um Freon or antifreeze or refrigerant that gets put into your AC units. I think um I misworded something. At least it didn't sound completely right when I re-listened to it. I was like that might be confusing to people. The thing that I possibly messed up on was when I said that they don't know what they're doing. Um I wasn't talking about the HVAC people. I was talking about the EPA. So what I was trying to say was that the people that are licensed and that work in the AC unit industry or HVAC like the people that come out and work on um homeowners AC units and their heat and air as well as industrial ones as well like at hospitals and things like that those people are licensed to do what they are supposed to do what i was referring to when i said they don't know what they're doing i was not referring to those people because they know exactly what they're doing because they are educated they are licensed and they are certified in their industry the people i uh, was referring to or were referring to was the epa the epa is not licensed in any way shape or form what strangely in any of the industries that it's trying to regulate which i find very hypocritical because the epa is trying to regulate an industry that it hasn't even gone to school to learn about them it hasn't been certified like they don't have a license the epa they um they don't have um from what i understand they don't go to school they don't go to a journeyman's uh they don't go through a journeyman's program in order to learn about that industry they're just regulating after the fact which to me is very much stupid because that would be like me regulating a dermatologist when I've never been to medical school. See, here's the thing in regards to like medicine, medicine is regulated typically by, you know, like a a medical board of some sort. It may be run by the state because you know in order to be a licensed physician you have to have a license from the state that you're practicing medicine in but the board that regulates them typically the board members are doctors like they they've been to medical school they have some type of medical training and they have some type of licensing so that way they know what they're talking about when it comes to the EPA they they're they, they're not heat and air they're not plumbers you know they're not you know car mechanics they're not They're not people that actively understand or ha- or have ever worked in these industries. They're just regulating them after the fact. It's kind of like 
how to describe this. You know, it's kind of like when you have a relative in your family. It's called the one upper. It's like you have a really interesting story that you're that you're sharing at like Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner, but you've always got that one relative that one ups you on the story, but yet they don't really know what they're talking about, and they're trying to compete with with what you've gone through, even though their story doesn't even match in terms of relevance. That's what I'm talking about. So the EPA is kind of like the one uppers. of the relatives that we have in our families that they just don't understand that hey if you're not licensed in the industry maybe you should not be giving advice that was my point so i apologize if that came out the wrong way um sometimes i go back and i re-listen to my podcast just to make sure i covered everything and i thought well you know that wording did not come out the best way so i want to make sure that i give credit where credit is due because that's very important to me and i want to make sure that i'm speaking the truth on this stuff because it's very important to be honest and good and true in what you say and in what you do and i want to make sure that that people understand that um electricians they go through a lot of training it is not easy being an electrician um they they go through they go through a lot of training and they have to do continuous education and it's very hard work like i cannot see the professional paper pushers of the epa actually crawling through someone's attic to try and correct a lighting problem or an electrical problem like i just can't see anyone in the epa doing that because most of them are professional paper pushers mind you they have a job to do hopefully they are doing their job very well but at this point i think the epa has over overstretched its power of authority um and they're targeting people that work in the hvac industry and i think that is a mistake because when you target an industry that you have no business being in you know it just makes it very difficult for them to do their job and for them to do it well because what i imagine is going to happen is that the more people realize the huge increase in price hikes that is happening with this the more people are not going to want to get their units fixed or they're going to try and fix it themselves so and plus there's going to be a lot of black market products because of this see that's one of the things that the government kind of initiates sometimes when it has these federal agencies that are not really paying attention to what they're saying and doing and they don't understand the ramifications and the repercussions to what they do so you know it's it's one of those things like if you restrict a drug that is normally prescribed for a certain condition people are going to do what they can to get that drug if they need it they just are they don't care if it's black market I mean I would care but I mean some people when they're desperate they're desperate so it's one of those things that sometimes the government creates a bigger problem than what was happening before an example of this is gun violence um you know like in Chicago and in other places within the United States almost every place that has the strictest gun laws in the country has the most gun violence and the most horrific crime rates And the reason for that is because just because you make something illegal that doesn't mean that people that are committing those crimes illegally are going to stop. It's just going to increase them and it's going to make um it's going to make those people more money because they're the only ones with the guns. The people that are doing this illegally. So, you know, in regards to the EPA and what they're doing with refrigerants and freons and antifreeze and all that stuff, whatever the right word is, they're just causing a bigger problem. as opposed to trying to solve an issue. You know, I think that if the EPA really cared about the environment, they would not pass rules, laws and regulations that that just come down the pipeline and burden homeowners, it burdens apartment complexes, it burdens the people that actually work in HVAC because then they get accused of charging too much money and you know, they're telling people the truth, "Hey, the cost of this product and service and this good has gone up tremendously. We have to charge what we have to charge." you know take it up with the EPA if you don't like how much this stuff is costing it's just one of those things that you know the EPA if they really want to make things better you find an appropriate substitute that costs less money not more and also if the EPA really wanted to help they would reach out to different people within the HVAC industry you know like heat and air and from homeowners and from people that own small and large businesses that actually work in that industry and ask them okay what do you think would be a good substitution because you know I haven't heard that the chemical they're talking about and I'll do some more research for a you know a next pro- a podcast but I haven't heard that there was actually a problem. I would think that if there was a problem we would have heard about it. 
especially since, you know, we're doing this podcast. But I haven't heard of an issue with anything to do with HVAC chemicals or the products that they use, things of that nature. I just think the EPA like it's easier for the EPA to target the small guy as opposed to going after the bigger fish because the EPA they have figured it out that it's easier to go after citizens and get money from them as opposed to going after big corporations. So that's why they're they are outlawing one chemical or substance so that way taxpayers have to pay more money. It's easier to get money out of citizens than it is to get money out of businesses. Um I would think they would show the corruption and greed of the EPA. Also, I would think that the EPA again, if they really cared about people, they would reach out to people that actually work in that industry and take it very seriously what they say and what they do and realize that hey, the EPA is not the be all and end all. It's really just a guideline. It's just a guidance type mechanism. It was never meant to take over industries. It was never meant to do that. It was meant to help people not burden people. Um but anyway, I just want to make sure and clear that up just to make sure that everything is on the up and up and to correct myself on that. Again, I apologize if that came out the wrong way. but you know I have no doubt that my listeners are very patient, very kind and sincere people anyway because you guys are awesome and you guys to me you are the cream of the crop of my audience so I greatly appreciate you. So for the next podcast we will either go over another labor union or discuss the super fund sites in the state of Maryland. But until next time, I pray that you're happy, healthy and whole, that you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.